when Rosalie asked how many people here voted New Zealand to the top of that poll she was running about digital nations. Not one. So I couldn't go back to Dunedin and leave those people who have travelled from all over the world to this place to think that that's where we do. Because is it the room of movers and shakers? Then we, you, it must have been measured by a measure that I don't see in the real world. So I just want to share something with you about New Zealand's place in this digital nation. So the first thing is that technology isn't new. I mean, we're sitting here facing these challenges as though they've just arrived. Well, let me take that Māori worldview and start with my ancestors. Centuries ago, my ancestors travelled across a third of the planet in state-of-the-art waka, using stars to guide them, using astronomy, astrology. They were scientists, they were engineers, they were innovators, they were designers. They arrived at a country which was nothing like the country they left. So they had to innovate simply to survive. So this stuff's in our DNA. The stuff you're talking about today, is it, and the Māori worldview is the one that keeps it in context. It's out there now. And so then we go from there, you know, we have Captain Cook arrive, come sailing over the horizon. So Captain Cook, the first thing that shocked them was the way these state-of-the-art boats, these state-of-the-art walkers sailed rings around his beautiful endeavour. Then you sent your army, and your army came down here, and here's, a new, here's news for you there. They came down, and this was the first place in the world that actually got their butts kicked by technology and innovation in the way we designed paths, the way we fought, the way we did these battles, and you took that knowledge and you took it back and started to deploy it overseas. So this is in our DNA. Then there's this man. Not that man, this man. He's coming. Oh, there he is, that man. So Lord Ernest Rutherford, remember him, the Kiwi who split the atom? His saying, we didn't have the money, so we had to think. That's what's special about us. That's what makes us different. So, you know, we call it the number eight piece of wire here. People say we should get rid of that number eight piece of wire because we've moved on with this new technology. It's so wrong. That's in our DNA because it was never about the piece of wire. It's what clever Kiwis did with that wire that it wasn't meant to do. So we should cherish and hold on to that. We mentioned the America's Cup. See, I've only got five minutes. I'm going flat out here. We mentioned the America's Cup. Well, that, we didn't have the money, so we had to think. Let's go back and look at what that team did. Everybody thought it was a boat race. It was a technological race of enormous consequences. Team New Zealand took on Boeing, Airbus, the Formula One Red Bull team, and Oracle, some of the great, great innovative countries, tech countries in the world. And how did they do it? They designed everything in a shed down here in New Zealand and beat them. Trevor Spittle probably phrased it all for us when he goes, oh, I mean Spittle, um, whatever his name is, I've forgotten already, he's Australia. Um, so he, he summed it all up when somebody said, how did the Kiwis do this? He said, well, you may not have noticed, but they didn't get here until eight weeks before the race had started. While we were all up here with all our flash designs and all our high tech, they stayed in a little shed in Auckland and we had no idea what they were doing. And it wasn't until they got here that we figured out what they were doing and it was too late to catch them. So our isolation is a real great strength and that is a really typical story for, for, for that thing. Now, you know, we talk, we've given our governments a bit of a hard time, but let's talk about the fibre rollout here. That fibre rollout in New Zealand puts us in the top five countries in the OECD. How, how come nobody put their hands up and said, where are we? That's where we are. And it's really interesting. Listen to our cousins across the road. I did a documentary for um, ABC because they were in discussing the debate politicians were having there that they didn't need to roll out fibre for their people. They were just going to improve copper. So, you know, we're ahead of them as well. Um, and you just jump out some of these things now. Just actually, so um, in this world I'm in, I, I think about the people I know, just to touch on some of these things. So uh, I wrote them down. You know, we talk about what people are doing, Lance. And actually, I'm running out of time. So I'm going to show you this picture because this is a great story. See that building there? That building is being built in China, okay? What you won't know is that this building was designed by a company of just eight. The oldest person in that company is 34. They designed it. The budget for this stopped two years ago at US 1 billion. It was designed in a little office in Dunedin behind a restaurant by eight people. Seven of them are under the age of 30. They used 3D printers to design that building. That's been built in China now. Now, I've got another example of something they've designed, and I would have shown you the video, but we're going to play it on the wall, play it on the wall later. So finally, um, just to summarise all this up, 
If we think about this country and the power that it has, let's just go back to those ancestors of mine who sailed across the largest space of open water in the world in state-of-the-art waka using the stars to guide them and take that uninterrupted journey all the way through to Mahia Peninsula, the first place on planet Earth to see the light of a new day. We're in a joint venture with the local iwi. A young guy called Peter Beck is taking rockets that he designed and built here in New Zealand back to the stars that brought us here. So I hope when somebody asks this room again, where does New Zealand stand? At least someone will put their hand up. Thank you.